This is Dolany TV, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another edition of Edmonton Oilers Discussion here on the channel on a fine Saturday afternoon, which I think the entire province is actually getting snow. We're just starting to get it down here, but uh, we'll get uh, we'll get that winter weather update going tomorrow afternoon when we get a video up sometime on Sunday. However, well, ladies and gentlemen, one thing I'd like to note is please pay attention throughout the video. Tell me how the audio is. You see something completely different on my head today instead of the lavalier mic. Went out, manned up, spent some money, hopefully figured out the audio. Actually, the stupidest part is the headset, the mic set was probably not the issue. It was probably legitimately just I didn't have the right filter on, on, on my recording software. So it is just what it is, but let's get to it. You know what? Something just being what it is, so far this season, has been Gaetan Oss, right? Obviously, Gaetan Oss has not had the most spectacular transition to the NHL up until this week, you could say, right? This week, all of a sudden, we've seen things kind of turn around for Mr. Gaetan Oss. However, the, uh, the past few uh, weeks prior weren't exactly the most solid. He did have a good little time down there in Bakersfield when we assigned him down there. Comes up, all of a sudden the Oilers uh, not exactly getting the results we'd like offensively. And then, well, as if out of nowhere, Gaetan Oz starts getting those results for us, right? And the key for him is he's getting in front of the net, kind of standing in the not greasy areas, but getting to the front of the net and getting in the lanes. And that's a term I mentioned when we were talking last night in the game review about Mr. Matt Benning and what he's doing with getting shots, not necessarily on net, but getting him in the lane like he did last night for the Gaetan Oz tip. And if I've got my math and my statistics correct, Matt Benning actually has both assists, primary assists, on Gaetan Oz's goals. So right there, guys, that's, uh, that's maybe something we're starting to see, is you actually do have to deploy your weakest pairings, technically speaking, your third D pairing in your fourth line, and you're going to get results if you deploy them together. Obviously, that's two goals we can directly link to deploying Matt Benning and Gaetan Oz on the ice at the same time. So that's fantastic for the Edmonton Oilers, I must say. But uh, let's let's dive a little bit deeper into this whole Gaetan Oz. Like, I mean, we're starting to see something that I think some of us thought was going to happen all season long. And this is, well, maybe we're going to get in here just early enough to claim we're the real guys that believe Gaetan Oz is going to be a big solution to this Oilers team. So let's go back to when he was signed on July 1st. It was kind of actually like June 29th. 30th when we got the official confirmation quasi kind of deal and then July 1st when Ken Holland addressed it in the press conference following free agent frenzy saying yes we did indeed sign Gaetan Oss today and he's going to be a part of this team moving forward. Well now Gaetan Oss has been a part of this team for 11 games so far this season so that's 11 of our well what is that uh, let's math this out 18 games this season He's got two goals and one assist, all even strength points. The assist came on the Yoakum Nygaard. Beautiful out of the corner play. Mm, you know what, guys? We could use a little bit more of that in my life as well. He's a plus one so far in 11 games played. And this is where it gets really interesting for Gaetan Oz Because, guys, we know his ice time has been all up and down this season. You think about it. Um, let's just review the last five games for him, and then I'll get to his average time on ice for you. 11 minutes and 46 seconds back against Columbus. That's a win. Against Pittsburgh, 8.45. It's a win. Against, well, Arizona, 7.09. It's an OT loss, but he got a goal. Then you've got 12.06 against St. Louis. It's a loss, but guys, we really saw what led into that New Jersey game, resulting in the goal from Gaetan Oss in the St. Louis's game at Rogers Place starting. It was starting and then it all of a sudden boiled over and exploded into a fantastic effort from Gaetan Oss in only 8 minutes and 57 uh, ice time. That's all he had against New Jersey, so fantastic for him. Now the thing is, maybe what we have to um, kind of point to here with Gaetan Oss is the simple fact that in the last 5 games he's played, he has 7 shots on net. However, in 11 games total, he only has 9 shots. So this is kind of where, you know what, the transition, the confidence, the, the coming to play and becoming part of a team 
And realistically, the Oilers just shooting the puck more because I got an interesting stat there as well for you in terms of 28 plus shots or more. You'll have to ask me for that in the game preview tomorrow against the Ducks. However, you know what, Gaetan Oz, the last five games, he's come up, he's shot the puck, and two goals have gone in on seven shots. Guys, that's a fantastic shooting percentage. He had on the other two shots he had all of this season prior to these five games, and he's got a total of a 22.2 shooting percentage. So if this guy can all of a sudden start burying the puck, and I mean, he's got a good shot. We've seen that on, a, well, probably two or three of his shots this season. However, the key with him is he's just got to shoot more, just like everybody else on this team and one thing we saw guys that Grandland toss line out there last night who was the uh, fourth one it was Patrick Russell guys that line I, I thought it was going to be the Archibald Sheehan Caroline carrying the bottom six minutes last night you know what that fourth line guys if that's what we're going to get out of our fourth line every single game my goodness we're going to be just fine because you get a goal you get a heck of an effort guys these guys were grinding working around Gaetanos was stealing pucks straight up no business stealing pucks in the offensive zone and getting the job done. So that was fantastic for him. And of course, that line really enabled him to go out there and get that goal. You got to think about the Gaetan Oz goal coming off of a great dig rebound play by Marcus Granlund. He thought, I, I don't know if he thought about jamming it back on net or if he took it off the rebound already generated and jammed it around the net. However, it came back to Chris Russell, Matt Benning, back of the net, Gaetan Oz tips it in in the lane, right? So we know how that one breaks down. Now, what you have to know about Gaetan Oz is there is some uh, there is some drawbacks to his game. Obviously, he's had uh, a total of... This is the tough part, 78 face-offs and only a 47.4% face-off percentage. We kind of, well, if you followed how Gaetanos was brought to Edmonton, he was brought in to be that right-hand shot kind of specialized centerman. Only a 47.4% efficiency. We'd like to see that as close as possible or higher than 50%. It just is what it is. And I mean, realistically, guys, that's after 11 games of NHL experience. You give them 50, and this is exactly where I'm going. I'm trying to review everything so far, and then we'll get to why I think Gaetanos is really going to be something of a force down the stretch here for the Oilers after Game 20 and on. He's had six blocks, he's had eight hits, so he's blocking about one shot every two games, hitting a guy about every game and a half, and then of course he's had five takeaways and five giveaways. I'd swear two or three of those takeaways came against uh, New Jersey last night, but that's the games, guys. That's where you got to have your big dogs uh Eating as well as your little dogs as well like Gaetan Oz. Not to call him uh, insignificant by any means, but you know what I'm trying to say there. So for Gaetan Oz, the thing is power play goals for while well, the players on the ice. Total goals against while well, the players on the ice this season. He's had four against and total goals for. So you know what, he's, he's not, uh, not doing too bad in that plus minus category. And let me see if we can get the... Um, adjusted goals for, I don't know how the adjusted category works on hockey reference, guys. I'm trying to figure this out. I'm not too good at the fancy stats, but uh, okay, you know what? Let's not uh, let's not dwell on it too much. Let's just get into the other side of the facts that we have to cover here. You know, I've laid it out here. Gaetanos, that is Gaetanos, as Gaetanos is through 11 games. Now, you've seen, as I mentioned, St. Louis, it was like he woke up and suddenly, oh my goodness, we might have just found something that we didn't have before. And then against New Jersey, yeah, it came to play. And that's exactly, Gaetanos, in less than nine minutes of ice time, was probably, per second, one of the top three next to Nuge, next to... Chase on next to, like, you can obviously say the big dogs, but next to anybody outside of the big three, right? Dry Settle, McDavid, and Nuge. Chiaison's up there as number one, probably. Gaetan Oss is number two for most impactful oiler per second of ice time in that New Jersey game. That's without denying. And this is something, guys, you look at the sneaky speed, right? He forced an icing. On just the sneakiest, like, bang, bang, and he was there moving his feet. And it's just phenomenal to see, is Gaetan Oss is a lot more multidimensional. And I think we knew that coming into this season. 
I think we did know that, but now we're starting to finally see it because he's finding a groove. He's finding that regular ice time. Even if it's only going to be nine minutes on the ice per game, finding that regular ice time and finding the ability to move his feet and create what he can within himself is going to be valuable to getting him up to that full 12, 12 and a half minute ice time if you eventually evolve the third line into a Gaetan Oss line instead of the Riley Sheehan, Josh Archibald, Jujar Caroline. Because right now we have, I, I don't want to say 3A, 3B. I don't want to say 4A, 4B. We have about 3B, 4A, right? You know, you know what I'm getting at? Or 3B, 3C. That's that's maybe a better way to put it. And Gaetan Oss is the key here, ladies and gentlemen, to evolving this Oilers team to be that full legitimate threat we all want them to be. Guys, I, if, no matter what side of the spectrum, whether you're the Oilers are a terrible team, they don't deserve to be winning, their record's a sham, it's a scam, don't sell into your hopes, get out of here, it's a losing product. Or if you're on a, guys, why are we not celebrating our record as it is? This is fantastic, we've done great so far, let's keep it going. You can be on neither group. I don't care. But Gaetan Oss is the puzzle piece on that third line. If he figures it out depth scoring wise, if he figures it out face off wise, guys, we are a legitimate threat as soon as we get Joachim Nygaard back, Adam Larson back, and we figure out what we have in those two. And now we are starting to learn what we have in Gaetan Oss. Suddenly, guys, this Oilers team kind of does a 180 and evolves into, like I said, a legitimate threat. Now, a legitimate threat in the NHL is just to make the playoffs at this point of the season. Because, you know what, a legitimate threat was the uh, Tampa Bay Lightning, and they finished first in the NHL and got swept in the first round. So, that, like, that's the thing what I'm saying here, is all that matters is being that threat to get into the playoffs. you got to get there, and anything can happen afterwards. And that starts with getting that bona fide third line going. And guys, would you not take Gaetan Oss dragging a guy like Marcus Granlin, dragging a guy maybe like Josh Archibald, or depending how you set it up, Alex Chieson, into the fight, and all of a sudden, you've got yourself this offensively fashioned, really good defensively third line, right? You think about... Josh Archibald, you think about a guy like Marcus Granlin, they are insane penalty killers. You don't go kill those penalties we did last night without those two guys. Well, suddenly you give them a guy like Gaetan Oz who can uh, get that puck into the net or get the puck to them in a sneaky area. Suddenly we're talking in a very evolved third line. And it's just, as I've said a little bit throughout this season, it's just a matter of figuring out where the puzzle pieces fit. And it's hard to do it with the injuries we've had. So now as the injuries start to heal themselves up and hopefully we don't have more, Gaetan Oz gets to kind of shine and show what he's worth. So guys, what do you think? Gaetan Oz, is he that missing key? Is he that missing key that uh, we just all of a sudden had to wait 18 games to get? And now suddenly he is here, he's arrived, and maybe it's time to go? Or is it? Or is we just kind of getting a little bit too excited by not too much of a result? Because, wow, we got depth scoring on the fourth line, and that's really almost a first time for everything kind of deal, right? Colby Cave obviously has done it, and now he's down in the minors, so what are we talking about? But guys, I'm Tyson, this Stolen Stolen TV. That's my thoughts on Gaeta Oss this afternoon. I want to know your thoughts on the audio as well. Let me know about how you've enjoyed uh, the new change to the audio system here on Dolan TV. I will catch you, as always, in the next one.